I recently purchased a Tamron tap in console to do a firmware update on one of my Tamron lens. I'll walk you through the process on how to do the firmware update on the lens and also give you my thoughts about what this device can do and if it is a worthwhile purchase to have. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. The reason why I'm here talking about the tap in console is because I recently purchased a Tamron SP 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 DI VC USD G2. And I'm going to talk more about the G2 capability of this lens. You can tell that it is a newer generation G2 lens by the gold ring that is where you would mount the lens to the camera. The construction, the ergonomic, and I would also go out and say the optical image quality is also much better on these G2 lenses compared to what Tamron has released before as well. And what I really like about their lenses is that the price point is really sensible. It represents a really great value. And many of their lenses now go really toe to toe with the OEM lenses from the camera manufacturer. So that is definitely something to think about. Now, normally when you have an OEM lens, if you have a Nikon and you have a Nikon lens, generally the lens firmware update will be done through the body where you would download it, put it onto a memory card and perform the firmware update from the body itself. On Tamron, you really can't do that because they are a third party lens manufacturer. So they have come up with a pretty genius solution, actually a tap in console. And this also extends to some other capabilities that you can do with the lens as well. Quickly about the tap in console, these come in three different mounts based on the mount that Tamron have so far. So this is a Nikon F mount. They also have one for the Canon EF and also the Sony Alpha mount. And the reason why I needed to get this is because this lens that I purchased use is running on an older firmware. So it's not compatible with my Nikon Z7. This is a Nikon mirrorless one. When I plug in the lens or when I link the lens up to the camera with the FTC adapter, I would see a dialog saying press the shutter button to start taking photos. I would, and then I would get another dialog saying error and the camera would lock up. It's not the lens or the camera fault. It's just that the firmware are incompatible. So this leads me to do a firmware update. So a few things though that this tap in console allows you to do with the lens is that beyond just doing firmware update, and by the way, being able to do firmware update yourself is really neat because the only other option if you didn't have this is to send the lens to the service center, which does take time and the lens is away from you. So this is really neat. The tap in console allows you to go in and customize all these little switches. So for instance, you can control how you want the switch to focus or what distance at the different settings. You can go in and customize the VC or vibration control. That is the vibration reduction motor inside. You can set the different customization parameter for it and you can really go in and do focus fine tuning on the lens. But what I want to talk about quickly is the firmware update portion of things. So I'm going to be doing this demo on a Apple M1 computer and this is running Mac OS Big Sur. And it has been working in Big Sur just fine, Mac OS 11, even though on the website itself, as it says that it only supports like 10.14, it would be great if they would just come out and officially support this and update the software so that it's compatible like fully. But so far it has been working without any problems whatsoever. And when you want to do this, you can also go on to Tamron website and check the firmware version and when they were released. For example, for this lens, the latest firmware was released in 2018. So there was no any recent releases, but on some of the more popular lens, I would say like the 24 to 70 on the Canon one, there was a release as latest as 2021. So obviously the different release date for the firmware are going to change a little bit. But the way how I see this right now is that if you have these legacy mount, like for example, the F mount or the EF mount from Canon and you upgrade to the mirrorless one, Canon's the R mount, Nikon's the Z mount. These are what I generally like to refer to them as generational upgrade that once you do the firmware update on it to make sure that it's compatible with this generation, it should generally work throughout without any issues. And you don't really have to go in and constantly run the firmware update on these lenses. As you can see, this was, like I said, latest update in 2018. But let's talk about some of the other things about this. Oh, and one last thing I want to mention about the firmware too, is that you can view when was the latest firmware update, but you can't download the firmware. This is done automatically through the program where it would contact Tamron server, download the thing and automatically deploy to the lens. But this also means that you are going to have or need internet connection. So make sure you're on a reliable connection while you're doing that. So to literally mount the tap in console to the lens, you would just uncap it. 
line up the dash and the dot, rotate it in. And this is pretty much just the release. You press and release. It's very similar to the way how you mount the lens onto the body. On the other side of this, you will see that there is a micro USB 2.0 and it also comes with a cable. I am using this right now with an adapter that is a USB A to USB C. You can get a direct cable, so that will work as well. And once you have it plugged in, it will light up in blue. So now let's go into the program. I already have this program launched. There are a few things that the program will tell you right away. If the firmware is not up to date, it will ask you, do you want to do a firmware update? To which I did said yes. Initially, I already gone through the firmware update. So the program will download the firmware directly from Tamron server, unpackage it and automatically update the lens. What I found out during the firmware update process is that it did take a while um, and it's much longer than a firmware update on a camera body. So make sure you exercise patience on that one. And I would probably connect this tap in console directly to the computer without passing through a hub or anything like that just to be sure that you won't have power outage like midway through or the hub decide to crash and your lens is now a brick and you have to send it into Tamron service center. So I recommend that. But some of the other things you can do, for instance, there are focus adjustment and you can go in and customize this through the different focal lengths you can see there from the different distance and also the different millimeter zoom that you have. You can always come back in here and reset everything to default. There is a focus distance limiter. For instance, on this lens, there is a button or a switch here that allows for a different kind of focus range. You can do the limited one, you can do like the mid range one, and you can allow the lens to focus full range. You can really go in and as you see on the screen, customize how you want this focus range to behave or what range do you want it to go to. Kind of neat there. And lastly, you can do the custom setup and this has to do with enable manual override, how you want it to function. Do you want the VC, the vibration control to just be like standard or you want it to show in the viewfinder too? So these are really all good customization. I will say this though, and I, this is more of like a caution thing. The custom setup I think is fine because it's something that is going to stay with the lens. It doesn't affect anything much. It's just only the way how the lens would function and you would know that. The focus distance again is one of those things that has to do with just the way how the lens function and perform and I'm not as concerned about this. But the focus adjustment is the one that I have kind of some quips and quorums about and here's the reason why. I am the type of person that will use this lens not only on just one body but multiple bodies both mirrorless and also DSLR the multiple DSLRs I have. I want to make sure that this lens will focus exactly the same way on all the bodies but the problem is this. I don't know if all of my bodies are set to the exact same focusing range or not. And that's something that is really difficult to determine. So if you go in and do a custom focus for this lens, just remember that you're doing this focus paired to that specific body that when you mount this lens onto another body, it may be off. So it's one of those things like, do you really want to go in and do a focus customization or focus adjustment, especially if you have multiple bodies? That's just definitely something to think about. And the other thing too, that even though you may have two bodies that are identical and you would say that they're focusing really close to each other, you can take those body into a service center and the way how they do the calibration for the focusing is pretty much similar to display calibration where it is a moment in time. There is a precision and there is a tolerance range. And as long as they hit that tolerance range within the plus and minus the microns that they have, you're generally going to be okay, but they're never going to be 100% exactly the same as each other, always going to be slightly off from each other by a little bit. So if you go in and customize this lens to one particular body, you may have a problem with another body. The best way that I think to approach these focus adjustment is to have everything zeroed out, meaning that your body should be zeroed out from the service center that is focusing neutral, is not biasing front or back. And the lens should also be neutral so that when you mount two neutral things together, it just lines up perfectly and there's no none of that give and take thing. The other way that I would say you may want to consider for the focus part is to use the in-body focus adjustment. For instance, on a Nikon body, you can do focus fine-tune and I would probably do that on the body instead. This way you can customize this lens specifically to each one of those bodies rather than having a generic setting that will apply to all the bodies and you may not get good sharp shots. So that's kind of my thought about that. Again, you can always play with this and come in and set it back to the factory default. That's not a problem, but that's just a caution thing there. So overall, what do I think about this tap in console? I think that the ability to do the firmware update on your own is really great. As far as doing the lens focus adjustment, I 
personally would not go in and do it. And I generally don't recommend doing that unless you only have one body. And if you really want to spend that amount of time to really go through this whole process, that's perfectly fine. Just the one thing though, that if you decide to get rid of lens, sell on eBay or on the secondhand market or something, just do the courtesy for the next buyer and just go in and reset everything back to factory default. Because if you end up meeting with a person to sell, they, you know, the pictures that are coming out from their camera body with this lens may not look as sharp. So anyway, I hope that you find this information about the Tamron tap in console helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.